to go live on time yep so perfect so of course the, you know the drill a little bit on the conference a minute there and then we go okay so world mediators conference mediation vision 2026 evolution of mediators and mediation 18th may to 30th june so the opening session was on 18th may by ken cloak please watch a little bit on the, the session conference a minute there and then we go one sec i think what okay, i have so is so world mediators conference mediation vision 2026 evolution of mediators and what? mediation 18th may to 30th june is there something what? playing on your end by ken cloak Please watch. Little bit on the session. Conference a minute there. Okay. I think yeah, something playing on your end. Perfect. So that's about it. So there is a schedule out there. Please have a look. And Jini, you know what it is. What is the topic, Jini? What is the topic today? I I, I was on mute. So, I'm on mute, so I'm not sure what's going on with the sound. So um, you play, basically, you've got YouTube playing on the other on your end, so you just have to shut that window of YouTube because it's gone live on YouTube, so it's playing from there. So if you see the windows on top, you'll see a window with a little speaker on it. That's the one that's playing. So if you want to take a minute, still no, it's still going on. Do you want to start over, Vikram, or are you? No, okay? no, no, I can't start <laughs> over. These are live things. No concept of redoing things. So perfectly alright. So what is the topic? What are we discussing today, Jini? We are discussing who pays for mediation. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So your topic, you have to introduce yourself and take it forward, and I'm there to come in whenever you want me to come in. Absolutely. I'm going to change my name here. Don't start changing a name, Jeannie. It's okay. <laughs> um, and so when we were talking, Vikram, oh, so my name is Jeannie Zimmer. I am in the state of Minnesota in the United States, and I have been involved with community mediation for over 20 years and restorative practices for closer to 30 years. And one of the challenges I think across not just the country, but the world is who pays for mediation. And so um, Vikram, Vikram and I were talking about that. And I think we may come at this from slightly different perspectives. Yeah, you heard that yesterday. So the, maybe that's why. <laughs> okay. So exactly. yesterday we had a session on community mediation, a United States experience. So I had said some things there, which we'll discuss. Yes, please. Yes, yes. And so in the community mediation world, one of the nine hallmarks, which you can find at www.nafcom.org, which is the National Association for Community Mediation, one of the nine hallmarks is that services are provided, mediation services are provided without regard to the ability to pay. So the services are either on a sliding fee scale, sliding scale basis, or usually free. And what that means is um, community mediation programs need to find funders to subsidize that work. Now, the other core piece of community mediation is that the services are provided by trained volunteers. And so you aren't paying the mediators directly. There are There is staff that are paid. So you have um, case developers, you have um, trainers, volunteer managers, different um, staff configurations. So there are paid professionals, but the volunteers are also professionals. So in some ways that does lower the cost by having the trained volunteers, um, but there are still costs. Um, we use a lot of libraries, community centers, so locations, materials are often donated, um, but there's a couple of different arguments as well. Um, 
that are out there. One is that people don't value things that don't have a cost associated with them. So you can say the cost of these services are $150, but the city of St. Paul is paying for you to be here. So if you have an outside organization that will pay like a, like a municipality, a court, a school, that could actually leverage people attending mediation. We find though that putting a cost in front of people who may not want to mediate is another reason that they will not participate. So how do we help overcome the barriers to mediation, including the cost? And so, well, I'm not gonna do it. I don't wanna do it. She's not gonna come, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm not gonna pay. It's like, well, you don't have to because this organization is underwriting the costs of your services. So the third party payer is one wonderful way that many community mediation programs have found to subsidize the cost and to encourage people to participate. So when do you want me to come in, Jeannie? Anytime. Whenever. No, no, look, those nine points, if you take, you want to take us through whatever, but I'll tell you where we have to start. We have to start from the first stage itself. Why should the people not pay? So obviously there must be some reasons behind it. They've thought about it. So let's look at those and let's see whether those reasons have some base or have they been put there because someone thought about it at some stage, but it did not work out, but they were not changed because someone did put it down on paper and said nine points and they went on. So a little bit about what you think. Why should they not pay? We'll discuss that first and then we'll go. Well, if we want to achieve um, access to justice, and if we consider so community mediation as a social justice movement, the ability for people to participate in an alternative process, we want to remove any barriers that may exist. And many of the people with whom community mediation programs work. Uh, many of the people are people who may not have the income. For example, the center where I worked was co-located with a public housing family site. So you already have people who are uh, um, who may have lower incomes so that, that they do not have the latitude to pay for mediation. So that's one of the one of the points is the removing any barriers, access to justice, and then also you may have somebody who is very well to do, um, who has the the wherewithal, but then that automatically reinforces that that power imbalance that can come with income. So I tell you what, Jerry, well, let's go with the basic. Is mediation access to justice? I think access to mediation can be access to justice. Absolutely. How, yeah. How would that be? I mean, I really want to understand that. Well, so if you consider justice, one of the aspects of justice being the ability to be self-determined and to use an outside neutral or a pair of neutrals in the case of community mediation to help you resolve your conflict without having to go through a judicial system so that, uh, that access to alternatives to the legal and criminal justice systems, that is access to justice. You have the right to then speak your truth, be heard and resolve your issues without becoming a case statistic. Because we're talking about mediation where definitely no one is deciding anything for you. Mm -hmm. Two people are sitting together in a room and between themselves, they say, okay, let's settle it for this. Is that justice or access to justice? How does that happen? Because every time two people sit together, they're, in, they're doing something which is obviously it's their dispute. They've settled it, has nothing to do with anything, the government, the judiciary, nothing. They have nothing to do with it. It's a totally different process. It's outside all that. But to I'll tell you why, why I'm asking, going into this is because for me, how I look at it in most parts of the world, is that the court system is overloaded, overloaded. So they have created this discussion that we will send you for mediation and you've got access to justice. 
that kind of an argument, whatever. Look, judiciary can say anything and get away with it. Look, the point is justice for me means that you are there is a setup of a court system, and I went there and I got justice. That's that's how we should look at it. Let's not let not them let put us into a direction and in a way mislead people saying we've given you access to justice no you have not you were supposed to be do a certain job in a certain way and i come for justice to you i don't come to just for, to, for justice to myself i don't go to for justice to the part the people person that i have a dispute with only only two of us are involved in it i don't go to the mediator to give me justice because the mediator has nothing to do with it not deciding for me is doing nothing so whom am i getting justice from is it the mediator or am i getting it from the other party that's oh, three people involved in this. Well, um, so I think there are different ways of looking at justice. So, so the judicial system's um, encouragement or support for ADR often comes from the need to increase turn or to reduce turnaround time, and so that if you have these long waits, so that so if you can get to mediation more quickly than you can get to the courts, then they see that as the, increasing justice or access to justice because you're getting a, a resolution whether it's a mediated settlement or a court decision you're getting that more quickly so that was one of the arguments was that access to justice so, that so basically, yeah. Because, yeah. i'll tell you why now i have a court and i have a road going to the court mm -hmm. the court says i'm putting a wall on the road you have to climb this wall and you're getting access to justice I mean, come off it, you're creating a barrier between me and the court, but you're calling this access to justice. You just stopped my access to the court by telling me you have to go for this because countries now are picking up from some places. It, the, the Italian model has become something that I started discussing on this whole thing. Why are you even discussing it? It's them taking you into a direction which they should not. They have to be efficient. However, they have to work it out. That's their job. On the other end, mediation is something between the parties. They have nothing to do with getting justice there. They were oh, not getting not... justice. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, they were, I, they're not getting justice in the system. That is why they would go for an option because you like I keep saying you heard I don't know whether you heard me how many times I keep saying this that justice delayed is justice denied you are not getting justice there so to fool people now and say oh you've got access to justice we sent you for mediation and you don't have to pay anything there so you've got access to no we have nothing you have nothing to do with that process it's my process I have to do it the way I want to I will go for that if I want to if I, you have you are a totally different dispute resolution system you have it has nothing to do with mediation i mean if there was some connection somewhere i would think that this is the colonizers whole like you have heard my colonization mindset thing that access to justice the dispute resolution everything in relation to courts that's what you, was what they wanted to push but suddenly it becomes convenient to say oh justice can be done outside when you get two people sit together justice is done Come, come on, how do you how do they justify it? How do they even let's, go about let's, justifying? Let's come up with some examples for that. Yeah. Um, because as you said, justice delayed is justice de denied. And if you have a three month waiting, um, three months, six months, nine months to have your case heard by a an, um, a referee, for example, which is a not an actual judge, but will do some of the lower level cases. Um, but if you can sit down tomorrow and have your case resolved to your satisfaction through mediation, you will, and, and if, let's say it's a small claim and you have money that is owed you, and let's say you have a relationship with this person who owes you money. And if you have to wait three months, six months, nine months to resolve that through the court system, but if you can sit down tomorrow and work out a payment plan or get an apology or figure out where the communication broke down, you are getting what you were hoping for from the system, but in a way that isn't costing you anything. And as we all know, mediation, people are happier with the results because they've resolved it themselves and they're more likely to follow through on their settlement agreement as opposed to a court order. I mean, so, so they are getting their access that they wanted. They're getting it more quickly, and it's not a court order. They're not part of that system. 
Okay, so let me do, look at it from a totally different perspective because I know because this is the way you've looked at it. So it'll be difficult for to look at it from the other end. There is a person give some goods to a corporate big corporation. The corporation did not pay. Now he wants his money. Filed wants wants to file a case. Okay, there is a barrier in between or not. Forget even if there is not a barrier, how it have works. Let's not get into arguments of whether that should be there or not. That person has to go into a mediation, and if you can, I mean, if you've seen the situation in the U.S. about mediation about the lawyers controlling it, this guy has limited resources in terms of getting the lawyers. The cost of the lawyers, he doesn't know what is really going to happen in that case. Doesn't know, and cannot risk it because of the fact that the amounts involved are so large in terms of legal fees. Yes, he might get costs if it goes in his favor, but he doesn't know what's going to happen. This is he thinks this this or she or whatever gender. Okay, they, whenever I say they don't think about that, whatever gender. Now, if the person knows that my claim for a hundred thousand dollars is legitimate, totally legitimate, I should get it. But because of the route taken in the justice system there, with the legal fees and everything, all the risks involved there, and over the process taking whatever time, because the person has to run a small business somewhere. I mean, they're not everyone's not a large corporation. So the person goes out and okay, the mediation settles it, not to such satisfaction because of the other aspects. Yes, they agreed to that agreement, not that it was something that was something that they what what is what they got was what they wanted. It is deal making happening on that end. Now all that all that aspect of it sometimes get lost. Because of this aspect of mediation is something that you agree to it. We no mediator doesn't do it. You do it. What went through that person's mind? What their circumstances? What? Why did they have to settle for twenty five thousand dollars when they could have? They know that claim was a hundred thousand dollars. Have you ever looked at the costs involved for them? What, can they take that risk? You do. You don't know what the costs on the other end is. I don't know what costs they could have been given if the case went against them. They don't know what's going to happen. It's a person sitting there who's going to decide. So will they? Is that small guy going to take that risk? No, he said I can't take that risk. So let me get what I get. This is how the game is being played. Why are we fooling them if you got justice? The guy's claim was legit, totally legit. Well, I think so. Hopefully. With, with at least on the community mediation side, we want to make sure that everyone has good legal advice. And so in the case where you have the small business person and the large corporation, you'd want to make sure that they have talked to someone ahead of time. So legal aid, um, there are different, at least in the United States, different ways that you can get that sort of advice. But even if you know that you're, or you feel that or the advice is that your case is legit, you don't know how that judge is going to rule. Exactly. You have exactly. no idea. Exactly. Whereas in mediation, particularly if you have that sort of advice that would say this case could, could take you two years and it's gonna cost you this much in your time, you may be very happy with $25,000, even though your suit was for 100,000. Exactly. So it, it may be worth it to you to sit down in mediation and to resolve this. But I, look, Jeannie, what you're saying there is that compared to that route, which is a time consuming route, it's an expensive route, you're getting $25,000 today is like, okay, you got this on the other end, you don't know what you would have had to pay. You don't know what costs you would have had to pay. You're scaring the person. Yes, you scared them and put them into mediation. You scared them and they've got into a settlement because you should, why should that have been shown to them? Trial, whatever needed to be done should have been done in a day. Whatever appeal was available should be available in a day. I'm just saying that, look, you have a system that is supposed to be working efficiently because you are inefficient on that end. So this person has to go all through what they're going through. You as the person should not have those risks involved. If there is a judge is someone who doesn't understand the facts or the law, you should you have an appeal. That's what the whole process is all about. But you say that the appeal process might take another two years. That's what we do in mediations. That's what we tell them. But that's not something which is a fair, it's not justice being done. I mean, look, it's not access to justice. There's no justice that happened there. Well, let's let's say, Vikram, that this small business person really wanted to continue to have that business relationship with that large corporation. And that was really what they wanted behind the money. We always say it's not about the money. There's always something else that's underlying that. 
what's really important to that person. The court is not going to talk about any of those other things. They're only going to be taking care of the dollar amounts if you're suing for a, a, an amount of money. And so let's say that this small business person really wants to have a contract or an ongoing relationship or to have um, their integrity upheld through some sort of a recommendation or some other intangibles that the courts cannot deal with. Because I think we focus so often on the dollars, but there's usually other things that have complicated the situation. And so what the person is looking for is likely something that the courts can't deal with. No, I tell you, the thing is that whenever this aspect of the advantages of mediation comes up, all these things we talk about. Very nice. I'm perfectly all right with it. But when I look at the aspect of this, but one individual, small business or whatever, when, you, when I look at it from their end, from their end, that keeping that relationship was something, yes, they wanted to do. And because, like I said, on the other end, you're dealing with a, in this case, we're looking at, say, a large corporation. To deal with them, they know what the issues involved in terms of costs and what kind of a fight it's going to be. So they know that. So the, the reason for going into mediation to start with is I'm not going to get justice in the court. Because like I said, I'll, I'll stick to this. Justice delayed is justice denied. So I'm not going to get justice in the court. So let's go to this option. It's, a, it's not the option that they chose because of the fact that they found it to be the route to take, which is what we discovered, what I was discussing yesterday also. The point is if mediation did not develop in the US where community mediation develop, could have developed, did not develop, is because they were not going for mediation first. That 100 million cases going to courts every year and for, for total 400,000 matters in community mediation centers, that too including court referred ones. So it's imagine that's that, what is that size? So which means they're not looking at mediation first. They are going through the court system, maybe thinking that, yes, they might get some justice there. Otherwise, why should you file a case? If you don't, if it's you, if the lawyer is, dri is driving the whole thing, no, you must file a case and we'll get you a mediator in the court and we'll take you through mediation. I think that'll be a, a very funny thing for a person to agree on. So there is something that the per some person would have thought that maybe you get some justice. Maybe they're, they're getting fooled every time they do that, but it's the, that is, could be the route. Because if mediation had developed out of the court system, then I would have said, yes, they're looking at an option which they understand the advantages of that option and they think this is a good way of settling it. I would have thought, yes, something is happening there, but that did not happen. So, th so that is why it doesn't seem to be that I want to go for mediation. If it was like that, I'm going for mediation. Yes, works for me, relationship, whatever, all those things that we could say that you, whatever time consuming and all those aspects. He has understood all that when they found, found, filed it in court, understood all those things, but they still did it. So what was the reason for that? Um, so there's, you know, people talk about mandatory mediation and when some, so let's say you've been mandated to go to mediation, then the mediator's obligation is to say, you know, you have fulfilled that obligation by showing up here. If what you really want is to be in court, you can go back, you can go to court. You have that right to go to court. But here's why you might want to stay and mediate. Here's what might be in it for you. Oftentimes, across the country, people have no idea what mediation is. They think it's meditation. They think it's arbitration. They think it's we don't have clear messaging because we don't have any sort of centralized delivery service. And so people truly do not know. In the United States, what most people know or experience would be divorce mediation or sometimes child custody, which is very different from say housing court or housing mediation, neighbor cases, um, small claims, workplace. You know, context matters, and if you um, so, depending upon you know the the nature of the, the the dispute, then you know whether people have access and who pays that makes a huge difference. Because I tell you, when I'm looking at from the perspective of, say, I mean, in 40, 45 years of mediation, in 40, 45 years, if 
every year 100 million matters are going into court. Okay, it would, would not have been what it started with. We're talking about today's statistics, definitely 45 years, 45 years back, it wasn't the case. But if in that case, if that many matters have gone and people have had to go for mediation, forced into it or whatever way, number of people who would have experienced mediation must have been very, very high. So they would have spoken about it to other people. If it was such a wonderful process, which worked for them, they would have sp spoken about it in those tens of years. It should have reached so many people. Look, we went for mediation. It was the best thing that happened to, for us. And we were able to resolve it. Don't go to court. Go straight for mediation because mediators exist. Mediator was not someone who came from, I mean, not someone that the court produced or something. It's a mediator who's still outside and wants to do private practice. Mediator does not want to do the court related uh, mediation work. because they, they get nothing there. They're only doing it to be recognized by lawyers so that they can get private work which means that private work is what you're trying to develop in all these years if they were not able to develop private work as mediator because this should have been the route to take there would have been such large number of mediators doing doing full time mediation and only mediation because look at the numbers involved and if you look at ask people about the number in terms of their work that they get yeah Jim. I think you're missing so the numbers in the report um that I sent are just for community mediation community mediation centers no, no, not no, for no. but not for private mediators and practice private practice I mean if you would need to aggregate look at the number of mediations that AAA is doing you know the American Arbitration Association we talked about that yesterday how many cases they are doing so there are many and then we talked about you know, courts that have mediators on staff that are doing mediation. So there's many other ways that mediation is happening in the United States, not just. No, I, I'll, give, no, I'll give you an example. No. I'll give you an example. I'll just look, look, just look at JAMS. JAMS is supposed to be the largest, they say the largest ADR institution in the world is spoken about. They have, they have a total of 18,000 matters in the whole year. They are saying it is 50-50. 50 mediations, 50% 50 is mediation. So 9,000 mediations in the whole year. I mean, look at the numbers. I keep showing this 100 million in going to court and 9,000 is what you're talking about here. So what has developed? What I mean, look, I'm to go across the board. I'm saying all institutions put out their statistics and you'll be surprised to see the numbers involved. So well, it is... I think you would really have to, I, that's an interesting question, because I think if I start thinking about every place that is doing mediation in the United States, you would have to say JAMS and AAA and community mediation, then you'd have to look at the shared neutrals program in the federal government, where they have neutrals that are going, you know, to different um you know, um, workplaces or other workplaces that have internal mediators, or if, then you'd have to figure out the, how to quantify the private practice mediators. There's a lot more going on than is quantified through organizations like NAFCOM and JAMS and AAA. Well, I'm, I'm saying, look, finally, either we'll have to I mean, get statistics, but up till we don't get the statistics, the, in terms of I can only pick up numbers from what are available. How out of the, I'm saying 100 million? Are you saying that there are 200 million matters which could have gone to court, and only 100 are going? Perfect. If that's the that's the thing you're saying, and that look, we could have sent 300 million matters into the court, but we mediation has developed, and everyone's understood over the last 40, 45 years that courts are not the best thing. So so we are we have only 100 million going to court. I mean, 300 million population, 100 million is a huge number. If to say that you would have had every person filing something in the court, then I think there's a totally different issue we'll have to discuss. So this part of justice is where, of course, for a moment, well, let's I just, yeah, yeah, we let that go. I also, think, I also think that the court numbers may be inflated a little bit. So let's talk about um, housing court which um, you may have the owner of a building filing against, you know, 30 tenants. So you have, yeah, you have, you know, and that's, so those are, you know, one person with 30 different cases. So you have, and you have insurance claims like that. You have a lot of things that are going through the courts and counting as court cases that, um, maybe inflated uh, more like, parties like, yeah you're saying that more there could be more parties that just makes it worse that if there are 100 million matters which are not two parties which means how many people are involved in that 100 million matters 
that means more than the population of the us is involved in those matters exactly. so exactly yeah exactly. that's what i'm saying could I it be less what i mean what did i to say is that can it could have been less than that i think could somebody be. there's a dissertation in there for someone <laughs> to try to yeah. get a handle of all yeah. of that but so, in the housing court situation mediation really can be access to justice particularly if you are able to through community mediation change the way things are done for example in many um, leases standard leases in minnesota arbitration is the or there isn't even adr usually in leases it's usually court but if you can have the lease modified or the standard lease say encourage mediation so that eviction or filing towards eviction isn't the first step that it's sitting down and using mediation to keep people housed then that is a that is a form of access to justice it's a way of changing systems to better serve people well, I'm telling you, we'll, we'll, because this actually won't get anywhere because of the fact that that's the way, like I told you right in the beginning, that you understood access to justice from the perspective that an option is being given to you to settle your matter. And that is justice. I'm saying that that for me is not justice because the justice is to be done by someone. I am doing justice to myself or the other party is doing justice to me or the mediator is doing justice to me who else is there no one else is involved they go in other institution or anything is involved so so i'm just saying that let we will let that be jenny jenny we'll let that be because well, this is well, no, let's, tell you why let's, no, let's why? talk about the, the origins i mean we talked yesterday about how community mediation's origins are in the civil rights movement and is taking the power away from the from the systems and giving it to the people so if you're talking about that philosophically justice is the people managing their problems themselves not requiring the person in the robe yeah. or the person in the uniform to manage their conflicts for them and not having to pay into that system and not having to perpetuate that system the judicial system exists for a reason there's reasons that we have case law there's reasons that rights are enforced so I'm not negating that whole system, but so much of that system does not work to the benefit of its citizens. Well, what, what we are basically now saying is that the, there is not going to be or should not be any justice to be done by anyone else. We can within ourselves, we can be just within ourselves. We can be equitable under within ourselves. We can be fair, we can be reasonable, and we should not need any other institution to give us justice. Maybe if that's the way that discussion has to go, I don't that's not a problem. That's another discussion altogether. But to tell someone that you've got access to justice, it's a very big thing, access to something. There's no access to anything. You don't have access, you haven't accessed anything. You are back at the stage where you were, you were two parties, but you got in a person who does not decide for you, you, you do whatever you have to, you have not access to anything. So I'm saying you, you actually mislead people by saying they get access to justice, because that was the convenient way for the system which did not work, the inefficient system, that was their way of telling you in some way. And they, everyone just kept repeating it and it went around, oh, we've got access to justice or we've given access to justice. Well, it depends on how, again, Vikram, I think it's how you define justice and what people are really looking for. So if you're getting, if people are getting what they hope to get through the system, through a way where they are empowered to get their needs met through the process, which they're not going to get in court, that is a better system for I, most people. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I'll tell you, I keep giving this example. Last symposium, I gave it so many times. I said that here you have a village which is not connected by road. So they have major, major issues. They can't, I mean, their, their whole access to their market or everything else is, so they, they can't get it. Now they go to the government that you we want you to make a road connecting us to the world. The government says, no, you have to make the road yourself. You do it yourself. And for a moment, by you making the road, you have, been, have you been given access to the world? No, you got that access, did it. The government didn't do it for you. The, on the top of it, the government says, if you do not do it, that's where the mandatory mediation comes. If you do not make the road yourself, you will be penalized. And suddenly by you making the road yourself, 
we have given you access to facilities we have given you access to infrastructure you did not do anything you didn't do your job just because you were in some way you can be some words that you want to play with people it's the same thing with the justice system it's same thing with uh, with the government doing things if i have to do the thing myself and i've got access to something then i think i that it's uh, some someone Why wasn't is, who, why wasn't the road there in the first place? Because the government didn't I, make it. They didn't make it. They don't. They don't make it because they obviously. Were preventing the road from happening. No, the, they, it is not. They, they're overloaded with work. There are so many villages. There's so, so many. So they got what they wanted. They got their road and they got their access to the outside yeah, world. And they made it themselves. Right. They made, which is what mediation. So that is. And and they didn't have to wait for the system to grant it for them. System. Or to, to system to forced them to do it system forced them to do it they didn't want to do it they could not have done it but they, uh, for a moment they, they actually they one, one village able, but they, they were, were able to do it they had they, to they, they, they families did not eat one meal for the for, for 10 years they did not buy anything nothing they they spent all that there think of i mean think of it they, they had to sacrifice well, something so there was no access to anything this is the colonizers mindset that we can we don't have to do anything but we have to make you feel that you have got access to something you did not get or it is, is the colonizers we're doing it for you and there's a patronizing piece to that and we're going to we're going to decide where the road goes we're going to take a charge you a fee to use the road there's a whole other aspect yeah, yeah. to that if the if the system takes care of that road for yeah, so, you so what you're basically either we are saying that those institutions have to be dismantled but because you need them for something whatever is something so that part of it is the justice part of it when do those that systems are required for some laying down some basic aspect of constitutional oh. interpretation or whatever else so everything else is justice is going to be done when you do it yourself within yourself i don't know that's an argument we are totally different direction of argument but doesn't matter for a moment we leave that like we won't go there because that access to justice is an issue and we'll we can discuss it or we won't well, get anywhere i there. mean there are very but, but, but if we think so we think of community mediation as a social justice movement, a movement of empowering people. And so that's a really different way of thinking about mediation. So I tell you what, for a moment, if we, with the access to justice part, we're leaving it behind. We're not getting, we won't get anywhere. So let's just now look at it on you said, of course, giving it to them, they do not have to pay anything. So, I mean, access to justice, that one argument, that's one argument. So is that the only argument for them not paying or is there anything else? Well, so not paying, having a fee can become a barrier. So if, so like you were saying with the road, if people don't have to, you know, people had to forego their meals or do things to be able to get their road, people, if you put up another barrier, people in conflict often don't want to sit down and resolve it. Um, they want to have that you know, legal, you know, court piece. So if you say it's going to cost you $100 to sit down, that's going to be what, well, then I'm not going to pay that. But if you say the city is paying for you to sit down. I just want to, I want to really come in now because obviously, go, I'll, go, tell you why. I'll tell you why. For the aspect of courts and that justice, you're not removing that from the picture. It's still there. Lawyers functioning in that courts are charging people why are they only allowed to charge or why is it that not given free isn't that real access to that justice which we do on a, on, on whatever level are you saying that that the lawyer the rich people, rich people have exactly, their own now you've got you you've got your thing this is what i'm saying that the fact of someone who can pay someone who can pay and does not pay or doesn't have to pay that is where the issues start from uh, with, well, that, but yeah. you have you have a whole other system of justice in the united states particularly a private justice where you can hire your own judge and resolve things so people with a lot of money don't wait don't have to wait they have their own that's um, arbitration that's what arbitration is <laughs> that's exactly well, what it is you can, exactly so and so part of and and most people don't even know about that in Minnesota, it says that the costs of mediation should be shared. 
So if you are a millionaire and I am on assistance, you could say, I will pick up the fee or we could schedule it based upon the ability to pay. So you might pay $75 and I might pay $5 because that's based upon our ability to pay. So there are different ways to, but, but is that to happening have in, fees in, involved. But is that happening in the courts also? Is, is the same thing happening in courts also? Courts, um, you usually have a filing fee. And then the filing fee is paid by the person who brings the suit, but in the mediation, I mean, excuse me, in the court case, the judge may award then the filing fee that is being paid by the person who loses. So it's not shared in the same well, that's way. A gamble. That's, that's like, that's, go, that's like going to Las Vegas. That's a Las Vegas situation. That's a gamble. No, we don't need gambling here. The point is that this person who otherwise cannot pay when it and but is not in that limit of people who will get legal aid. I don't know whether legal aid or you have legal aid or not. So not into that category, but it is not a, not a person who has the same financial resources as the other side. So in the, that kind of a situation, is the court going to the lawyers who are involved? Is the court going to tell them that look, and compare it to a mediation situation that a mediator gets whatever. 20, 30, 40 dollars on that end. Lawyers can only charge 30 dollars for whatever matter well, they're doing in the same way. Yeah. Is there is there a, any fairness in that part, or is it the only the mediator and mediation is the only focus area where we are giving them access to justice by giving it free? Clearly. But courts, we are not giving it free to them. Why why are we not giving it in the courts for free for them? Well. I can't speak for the courts. <laughs> um, you do have, for example, the right to a public defender in a criminal case. You have, you know, court appointed um, attorneys that are available for people who don't. And then you do have things like legal aid that can give advice and do representation. So that that system does exist. It's woefully underfunded. So again, the system is stacked against you in the legal. So in some ways you have, your odds are better, if you will, you have more access. And I know we're, you said we're not gonna talk about this, but to, to be able to articulate what your needs are in a mediation than you would in a court. Okay, so uh, yeah, Mr. Vail left that. I'm telling you that we actually might not go anywhere because of the fact that we'll, but let's just look at now from the other end on the aspect of giving it free because it is something that a person needs and it doesn't, I mean, whatever other methods are not available to them. And this is one method of giving in. Again, I'll, I'll use your term, is access to justice, not a problem. But what about all the other aspects that are basic? This is not a basic need of life. This is a dispute you've got. What about basic thing? Let's look at food, food to eat. Let's just look at that. From the food to eat perspective, are you giving people free food? Because that's the requirement. Food is definitely a requirement. Are we going to give, are we able to give everyone free food? Because that's the, I think that's the first we thing people have, need. In the, in the United States, there is, there is assistance available um, for people to um, have access to food through the, through the government. So absolutely, there's both public and private ways of doing that. But I think the analogy might be better, um, something Charlie Pillsbury mentioned yesterday, the concept of this being a public good so if you think about highways, like your road example, or you think about you know, any of the infrastructure, water, the basics, if you think about then is community, is community mediation in particular a public good that everyone should have access to? Not everybody has a car, but the roads exist. Not everybody you know, takes a bath every day, but they have access to water and there may be fees attached to it, but it's usually something where the infrastructure is provided by by the government through a, through a funding system of some sort. But then the same thing when you look at the, the court, because finally we'll have to compare it with the courts. The same thing in terms of the courts, is it the same thing there? I mean, look, you're comparing it with that. Are you saying that in the same way people have what they are getting in terms of mediation or food or roads or everything? I would, I would rather do an analogy to like public education where you have public schools that are available to people. And so you have 
um, I'm not sure the courts are the best comparative. Um, we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have um, universal health care, so that's not a good example. But if you think about the, you know, the British system or the Canadian system with public health, that would be another example. How do you have community mediation available the same way that public education is available to everyone. No, I tell you, I tell you what the problem is, we're not giving them that. If you are giving them the education, if you are giving them health care, if that was the analogy, I would, it would have been, okay, you have not given them anything. They are creating it themselves, which is what I'm trying to say that you, you haven't done that for them. If there was something that they did not have to do anything for, you walked into a place and you got what you needed that would have been giving them access to something so if but if you were saying that i'm giving you access to healthcare by you reading or whatever you have to whatever disease you have you read it online and you can go pick up your medicine i've suddenly given you access to healthcare by giving you internet connectivity to look at those whatever symptoms you have online How, what access to healthcare have you given me so I'm just trying to say that there is something that you have to give them access to, to say, I've given you something. It's like education, like public schools, or whatever. in your case, public schools. In our case, public schools are actually private schools in that sense. But in your public school system, if I say I have given you the whole access, you can go and pick up reading material and read it yourself, you've suddenly got access to education. You are doing it yourself. There is no one who no one is teaching you, doing nothing for you. You are no, just you go, then, you go no, 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 not in this case. I'm just giving you the example that instead of the school, there was no school because there is nothing here. There is nothing that has been provided to you. If there was something that was provided to you in terms of look, again, so a the, mediator, the mediation mediator. Are, the mediation centers are the same way like a school or a hospital. They are, they exist with their infrastructure, with their director, with their volunteers, with their training. Sometimes they have a physical center that people could come to. Sometimes they're part, like in Baltimore, they have a wonderful um, community mediation center that's, that is used by the community in many different ways with a beautiful mural on the side. Um, people can come to that center when they, if they want to get training, if they have a conflict, the same, same idea. They may go online to look it up to see you know what it is but they're right there in the community and, and the, the the bus goes right in front of the building and people can get off the bus and come on in and talk about their conflict okay perfect i mean take, take it we'll, we'll have to look this part we'll have to leave because definitely it's not getting anywhere as i see it but okay let's look at in general getting something for free is that affecting the way people value mediation and mediators? Is that the correct approach in terms of if you say, okay, the state is paying for it, we've created, it did not work in the US also, but for the moment we're saying whatever a bit is working. So is that the correct way to go about it? Has it helped mediation and mediators? I think if you help people understand the value of what they're getting. so. Um, a bunch of years ago, I worked for an organization. This is an analogy that may or may not work. And what they started doing was in your paycheck, they started telling you what the value of the benefits you were getting, you know, how much, so you're getting health insurance or you're getting unemployment or you're getting certain things, you know, so that they were trying to say, this is what your take home pay is. But in plain language, they were showing you the other things that were not coming, not showing up in your bank statement, right? The intangibles. You can do the same thing with mediation and you can say, you know, here's the value of the time that you've spent here today. The value of the space and the training, the mediators, et cetera. There are people who can afford to pay $300 an hour or $1,000 an hour for the mediation, you know, the, the commercial mediations that are out there. And so there's a whole nother type of mediation that's going on. Um, and people are paying those fees, they're paying their attorneys, they're paying their mediators, they're doing it in, you know, high rise right. buildings that look out over the, you know, the lake. <laughs> it's all different. They're not doing it, um, you know, in the basement of a community center. <laughs> 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That look, all that is happening, and people are paying for it. So if they were yeah. look, if they, or maybe and maybe they are finding value in it if they're going for it directly. I don't look that part. I'm still not. I, we don't have statistics. We don't know whether they go for it directly or is big still the court route which has taken them there. That part we don't know. But for a moment we'll say they, okay, they went there and did that. Perfectly all right. We are we talking about the aspect of they are paying that. That's there. So who pays doesn't come in there because they are doing it. They're paying it. We're coming to the those places where they are not paying. Someone else is paying. So the first thing is, like you said, whether someone needs to pay, else needs to pay. So you said, is there some access to justice? So if this is considered under that. That is why the state has to get involved to pay for this. In some way, it is paying for. So we've taken that. I'm not getting into that part. Or, or a private corporation is paying, or an organization for mediators internally, for example, like the Postal Services Redress Program. So the no, no, I'm just saying that has that affected the way people look at mediation. And whether it has taken that whole, I mean, popularity of mediation forward, or is that it's something that you get for free is not valued. So who pays has actually been the worst situation that's happened for mediators and mediation. Has that? How do you look at that part? That's that's an, that's a, that's another interesting question, Vikram. You always have such great questions. I I think, and again, that would be a great study. Um, I know that the center that I worked at and many community mediation centers do satisfaction surveys and they may follow up six months or down the road to see how things are going. And the satisfaction surveys usually so show that people are happy with the process. They're happy often with the outcome, um, you know, it depends on, you know, um, if they've reached an agreement or not, but that they had the chance to say what they wanted to say. They felt heard, you know, that it was safe and respectful, that the process works for them. And particularly if they've had court experiences where they've not had that, that mediation, community mediation in particular holds up so that there's high satisfaction with community mediation. Mm -hmm. um, you also have people who come back. So they may have resolved a neighborhood issue, but now they have something going on in their family and they may call and say, you know, do you do this type of a case? So you have repeat customers, if you will, that are, are doing it, you know, coming again and again um, because they see this as a better way to address the disputes that they're experiencing in their lives. Ideally, for example, with a family situation, a neighbor situation, we want people to get to the place where they can do it themselves. Okay, so I think, I, uh, yeah, yeah. okay I think that uh -huh. I mean, what I, we will do at this stage, I would want to actually conclude it here. I'll, I'll tell you the reason, because the live stream for some reason stopped at some point, it seemed. Why did it stop? I don't know. So I'm thinking is we'll shut the meeting and start the for next session, start the meeting again. So I'll get that little bit of time before the next person comes in. Sure, that's a good idea. What's your, what's your next one, Vikram? What's this the next? Is, this is, this is uh, um, psycho I have, psychological safety and mediation. You know, it, it says it's recording, so it may not be live streaming. Yeah, yeah, streaming. yeah. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That I can always upload. That's not a problem. Okay. I'm just understanding because why is it not going? So I just want to shut this meeting and start it again. Okay, so, and so what's, and then was there one in two... So let's stop and then can I just yeah. check in with you really yeah, quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start the, I'll start the meeting immediately. I'll just I'll just okay. stop this. So anyway, so thank you very much. There is lots to discuss on this. And I think we might have started the discussion, but there is we'll have to take it forwards in some other way. So at this point in time, we'll just... I mean, we're not concluding. Like I said, we never conclude. We <laughs> just <laughs> close. So Jeannie, thank you very much. And let thank me start you. that. Yeah, yeah, let me start that. And let me see why did this not happen. So thanks. Sure, thank you.